Hello friends, welcome to Look and Live. You are now here with Pastor James Devalan. We are going to um, continue where we left off. As a matter of fact, this is the last of our seven part series of the seven deadly psychological sin with Dr. Jennifer Schweichner. Friends, it's been a, an amazing journey. I would like to know what would you guys like to do next? Because I have plenty more stuff that we can get through. Uh, let me know if you're ready for some more stuff. I'll give you the options. Would you want to talk about health, media, or you let me know? Would you continue this morning series where we talk about different things? I have a really good series of study uh, by a pastor. I think it's Pastor Scott. Um, but anyway, he, he does social media. He talks about technology. He talks about how to properly deal with these things. So maybe that's an option. So I'll get some consensus from you guys and share some, some options out there and then we'll start another series. But, uh, let's get into our last one today. Uh, this is a seven deadly psychological sense this is the last one that i have for you today and i'm hoping you are ready because this is another good one this is the last but not least and the title is bitterness bitterness without further ado let's get into the heart of the message Our next deadly psychological sin, it is probably the deadliest, bitterness. Mm. Someone once said that bitterness is like drinking poison and expecting someone else to die. Mm. Often when we're hurt by another individual or group of individuals, we begin to think excessively about that situation. We suffer an emotional wound and it takes time for us to process through that. So some thinking about it is okay, but there's a certain point where we're starting to think about it too much and it begins to consume us. And we call that rumination, when a certain situation fills our thoughts. What often happens with people that have fallen into bitterness is they may end those relationships, they may cut those off, but as they move forward in their lives, because that bitterness is not resolved, they will actually find another situation that is very similar to that situation. Mm to carry on the legacy wow. because they have unfinished business, so to speak. We can potentially become really mean, angry, negative people through bitterness. It's very interesting. A study was done on the effect of, of all things, Botox on mental health. Can you believe it? Botox impacts mental health, not just because it makes people think they look better, but because those expressions around the eyes, the furrowed brow and so forth, can have a reflexive effect on our psyche, on our emotional life. Wow. So these individuals were given Botox around the eyes and it was found that 47% of their depressive symptoms were relieved over a 16 week period. Wow. The replacement for bitterness, it's very simple. Forgiveness. forgiveness. Let me tell you a story. In 2006, a man named Charles Carl Roberts walked into an Amish school and shot five Amish schoolgirls in cold blood. Then he shot and killed himself. The amazing thing about this story is that the compassion from the Amish community toward an act that would normally call forth all the vengeance and anger of human nature, the compassion actually flowed more freely than the blood. Only hours after the shooting, an Amish neighbor appeared at the Roberts' home to comfort the family. Visits were paid to his widow, parents, and in-laws. One Amish man spent nearly an hour with Robert's sobbing father in his arms. Finally, 30 Amish attended the killer's funeral. One Amish man said, I don't think there's anybody here that wants to do anything but forgive. Wow. One of the reasons people hesitate to forgive is that they confuse forgiveness with other things. Let me tell you what forgiveness is not. Mm. Forgiveness is not excusing what that person did, mm -hmm. nor is it approving of what they did. Mm -mm. Forgiveness is not reconciliation. You don't necessarily have to enter into a relationship with that person. That's not always safe, not always advised. 
Forgiveness and trust are related, but they are not the same thing. Separate forgiveness out from those things and define forgiveness clearly in your mind. Forgiveness is you releasing your right to hurt that other person the way that they hurt you. Now we could argue that nobody has a right to hurt anyone under any circumstances, but in our minds we assume we have the right to hurt another if they've hurt us. Forgiveness is the voluntary releasing of that right. Mm. Sociologic research shows that those who understand their own sinfulness, their own capacity for hurting others are actually measurably more inclined to forgive. So if you're having trouble forgiving someone, remember times when you've hurt another. Carl Menninger said that if he could convince patients in psych hospitals that their sins were forgiven, 75% of them would walk out the next day. Wow. When we accept that we've been forgiven, we are going to be much more inclined to be able to forgive others. See, forgiveness is a two-way street. I receive forgiveness from God and from others for the things that I've done, and I bestow forgiveness upon others. I know in some ways this way of life seems irrational. Mm -hmm. We all have this justice bone inside of us, this sense of justice, <laughs> and we feel it needs to be fulfilled. Yep. But good counsel says leave that in God's hands yeah. and choose to forgive. It'll be better for your health, for your mental health, and for your spiritual life. Guys, we ended with a bang, didn't we? <laughs> we live in a world today where forgiveness is a taboo subject. You see, all the wars all build on this foundation of bitterness and revenge and getting back at those who've done us wrong. The greatest power that you possess is the power of forgiveness. The power to let go and let God. And I love what she says. Forgiveness is not excusing the wrong. Neither are we approving what was done as being right. Forgiveness is when I voluntarily release the person for my right to do them armed. Forgiveness is me releasing them of the guilt that I have against them. He brings peace to the soul, too, when you forgive others. You know, especially when you know how much God has forgiven you. Powerful. Uh, I've also learned about, you know, bitterness is like drinking poison and expecting somebody else to die. <laughs> it's just, it's crazy. You know, I've seen people who hold on to, uh, people who hold on to unforgiveness are among the most miserable individuals in life. They never really do good, generally. There is a psychological impact that unforgiveness has on the person that you just don't know how to move forward. It's bad. It's really bad. Rumination, when you're thinking on the thought over and over again, you're thinking too much on the wrong that was done to you. I think one of the solutions for that is just to get busy doing other, other things. Get busy helping others that are in need, you know. Um, find what's happening in the lives of somebody else and focus on fixing that. That would help you to lose sight of your own problems. It's really a good practice. Believe me, I try it. <laughs> uh, forgiveness. I love the Amish, uh, the Amish forgiveness story. I need to go check, in, check into that. I've heard it before, but it's a very powerful one. I want to go look into that story again. Um... I love what the psychiatrist said, you know, if people knew how God has forgiven them of their sins, they will more easily, over 75% of people will more easily uh, be willing to forgive others. It's true, friends, we've been forgiven by God, even though we don't deserve his forgiveness. We don't deserve it, but God has forgiven us much. And uh, when you think about your life, and how undeserving we are and how much mess we've made of God's law, God's name, how much we have hurt others. And to know as a Christian, you go to God by faith, you bow your knees and you beg for forgiveness and he forgives you. He restores you. He calls you his son and daughter. And then he turns around and says, you need to go forgive somebody else. 
go and forgive that friend go and forgive that wife doesn't mean you have to go back in a relationship with them but you need to release them of that guilt you have against them for us to say no is very selfish for us to say no is very self-centered this is not an easy saying i know but um if god has forgiven us friends we gotta forgive others for as tough as it is we're gonna have to let go and let god we're gonna have to release them of the guilt we're gonna have to if you don't know how to do it friends you know to ask god for help it's good for yourself to forgive it's good for the world to forgive it's beautiful it's beautiful i hope this was a blessing i hope you've grown learned something these series have been a blessing to you let me know do you want to keep going because believe me i i don't like any information i got stuff that i can study myself i have a series of bible prophecy that i'm gonna start working on i'm just waiting for my computer to come back that's in the shop right now i'm using a imac it's doing decent but it's not my cup of tea but um when i get once i get that back i'm gonna start working on the prophecy series so that's going to be a personal project for me and those of you on the channel. And this is going to be for 26 nights on a row. There will be no breaks, <laughs> no breaks every day, 7 p.m. Uh, night after night. These series will come out. These lessons will come out one after another. And the goal is to build you up in the faith. There will be no breaks. So you'll be like, yeah, I'm just letting you know. <laughs> and I'm going to pre-record those. So it's going to be really good. But um in the meantime, um, I have another series that I can go through uh, with Pastor Scott Ritzema, I think so, Scott Ritzema, where he speaks about the media, entertainment industry, music industry, but he comes from a biblical perspective with a lot of facts and solid meat. Uh, they're about 28 minutes long, so you let me know if that's something you want to do, or would you like shorter series like we just did right now? five minutes video or would you like to do a 30 minutes video so that means i have my introduction for one minute let him preach for 28 minutes taking notes the whole way i haven't gone through the whole series myself i've gone through parts of it so i myself want to go through that okay so 28 minutes and then so i'm thinking about 34 35 minutes per video if that's something you want to dive into every morning you let me know let's have the conversation i think uh if that is something you are open to yeah i can make it happen starting next week so i'll get a vote on that you give me a one if you want to do the the series for pastor uh pastor scott uh, ritzema where we talk about media music and everything entertainment industry how to properly use our phones and how the phone has an impact on the mind and all that he's giving you tools to actually better your life and to save your home and your children uh it's still dealing with the mind so we're still dealing with some psycho psychology if you will say so give me a one if that's something you want to do uh give me a two for no um maybe give me a three for something different uh because we have i have another series on health that is actually really good as well another doctor uh, giving you tips about health and i think that's another good thing we can also go through if that's something you're into we can go through that there's like a seven steps series of health and stuff we can go through very powerful anyway let me know so one for media two for no three for the health message where we can better ourselves all right, friends, thank you so much for listening. I hope these have been a blessing to you. This is the end of our series here. Seven parts is in our channel. I'll be promoting that. Make sure you check it out and let me know what you what you like about this, how much of a blessing it is, and how are you going to forgive somebody today, you know, releasing them of that guilt. If you don't know how to do it, ask God to help you. Until next time, and as always, remember to look up to Jesus, to live by faith. Have a good one. Bye.